Ignite your passion for the eternal word while searching for ancient tested answers to today's questions. Delve into the mysteries of the Bible to discover ancient Jewish wisdom with Rabbi Daniel Lapin. Now, here is today's program. Hi. Are you watching this show sitting in a house or an apartment, nice, secure, four walls around you, temperature controlled, pretty comfortable? You know, we tend to take our, our homes for granted until we hear about something like a tsunami or a hurricane or a flood and people lose their homes. And then we, for the next few days, we wake up and we're particularly grateful for just the shelter that we have. A number of years ago, we knew a young man, well, we still know him, of course, but we, we knew a young man who met a young lady. And she was from another city, and they wanted to get married. They were going to get married. And we'd actually met a, a number of the girls he had dated with whom he had thought might be suitable mates. And he usually brought them out to meet us and his parents and a number of other friends. And each time, it wasn't quite right. And this time, when this girl walked in, boy, those thumbs up just went around the room really quickly. Well, a few months down the road, the wedding was set. And so she decided to move from her city to our city to be able to plan the wedding. And she was going to actually stay with us. And he flew down to her city and packed up all her belongings in, the U in a U-Haul. And that night, they each stayed in their respective locations. And the next morning, the idea was they were going to start driving the U-Haul or she would fly and he would drive. I don't remember what that was. Well, the next morning, they looked, she looked out her window and the U-Haul had been parked on the street outside her apartment building and it was gone. So they flew up to, to the Northwest and after a few days, she received word from the company that had rented them the U-Haul that it had been found burnt to the crisp. I'm afraid I, it's, I, I hear now that this is not an uncommon thing that happens. But here she was, a young lady in a new city where really everyone she knew were her fiance's friends, not her own, and she had lost everything. And of course, the most painful things to lose were pictures, were documents, were letters, jewelry that had been handed down from her grandparents. But the reality of life is that she lost, you know, the insurance documents, all those documents that if you have to go replace them are really difficult. She'd lost all her clothing, just about everything. She was really a refugee. And, in, and she needed to grieve and she was on the verge of making a major life change. And we actually discussed in another um, program, I hope you've heard, that if you have the choice, don't choose to make two major life changes at the same time. In this case, she had planned on making one major life change and all of a sudden, by losing all her things, another big shock to her system came. And so she grieved, but I have to tell you, I was filled with admiration for the way she handled it and she absorbed it and she allowed herself to grieve and she still recognized that she'd met a wonderful guy and was on the verge of a wonderful life. And in some ways, having that door open to a great future made the loss of some of her past a little easier to bear. Unfortunately, many times when people lose everything they have or they become refugees, they don't have something in the future to look forward to. They don't realize it is there. And it made me think, of course, of one of the first refugees in the Bible. Who would be? Well, that would be uh, Lot, right? Abraham's nephew, uh -huh. Lot. When he is, the angels come and take him and his family, or part of his family, out of the city of Stom, Sodom. But he's a refugee. They, they go and they end up in a cave, he and his two daughters. You remember, right, <clears throat> excuse me, right here on TCT, we once did a program uh, on why Lot's wife turned into a pillar of salt instead of a haystack or something else, right? We did, but here, um, now, I think we're good. we want to focus. Here's, here's really a refugee, and there's something to learn. Again, everything in Scripture is meant for, as a lesson for today's life. And so when we look at, at Lot and his two daughters and how they behave and what they do, we can take, please, God, I, I certainly bless you that you never become a refugee, that you never have to flee in that way. But there are aspects where we all at times lose a connection to our past in some way or another, or we, we find ourselves in a, 
in a situation where it looks hopeless, where it just looks, we don't know where the future is going to be. We don't see the optimism. We don't see the silver lining or the, the hope on the horizon. And we can look and load and, and learn from his situation.